Okay, so now that we know about the Z test for the mean, we will talk about the T test for the mean. It's very similar to the Z test, and like the T confidence interval, it is used when population standard deviation is unknown. So look back at the slides of the confidence interval to know how to uh, determine whether sigma is known and not known. Just like with the confidence intervals, we need to either have a sample size greater than or equal to 30, or the distribution being sampled is a normal distribution, which you will usually be told, or you can create a histogram um, to see if it's normally distributed if you have the data. And another assumption I want to mention because it comes up in uh, my stat lab um, assignments is that the data comes from a random sample. And just like the Z test, um, we have the three different alternative hypotheses, so less than, greater than, and um, not equal to. And then the null hypothesis is always equal to the hypothesized value. Um, and the test statistic is almost exactly the same but instead we use S instead of sigma. We would calculate the p-value based on the table, um, but we really don't re have a good um, enough set of tables to do that, so we're just going to use StatCrunch to calculate the p-value. So looking at a, an example here, they did a study in an office and found that for 25 randomly selected uh, workers, the sample mean time spent off task is 65 minutes and a sample standard deviation of 17 minutes. And they want to know using an alpha um, level equal to 0 0.05, does the average time spent off task exceed one hour? So here the alternative hypothesis is mu is greater than 60. And that makes the null hypothesis mu is equal to 60. And then if we plug into StatCrunch the given values, um, so the summary statistics, that's the mean, um, standard deviation, and sample size. Um, and you'll see this in the example videos of how to do these. You get a t-statistic of 1.47 and a p-value of 0 0.0772. And as always, you reject H0 if the p-value is less than the alpha level, which alpha is 0 0.05 in this example. And since our p-value is greater than 0 0.05, that's 0 0.0772 is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject H0. There's insufficient evidence to conclude that the mean for all employees is greater than 60 minutes. So here's another example where this time you're given the raw data instead of the summary data, and we have 14 neutral substances. Um, we're looking at the values that the pH reader gives. So here are the values. And we want to know if the meter is incorrectly calibrated using an alpha level equal to 0 0.01. So we want to know if mu is different from 7, because a neutral substance means it has a pH of 7 in this case. So if it differs from 7 either direction, then we have an incorrect um, calibrated meter. So the alternative hypothesis is mu is not equal to 7, and the null hypothesis is mu equals 7. And if we get numbers from StatCrunch, we get um, T stat is equal to 1.118. And um, the p-value is 0 0.2579. So our alpha level again was 0 0.01. So our rejection rule is reject H0 if p-value is less than 0 0.01. And therefore, we fail to reject H0. There's not sufficient evidence to conclude that the meter is incorrectly calibrated. I do want to point out that um, saying there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the meter is correctly calibrated is different than saying that we can conclude that it is correctly calibrated. So this just means we just we just haven't proven that there is a problem here. So that's it. Um.
and go over the example videos again to know how to so this is given your raw data and then this example um, we're just given the um, summary summary data so you'll it'll go over both of these examples so that's it